The golden egg of Nintendo's February Direct was the surprise reveal that a new Zelda game would be hitting Switch in 2019. Link's Awakening making a comeback with a beautiful, cute, and clever new style, bringing the Game Boy Classic to the modern era and to a whole new generation of fans. This one inevitably will get a lot of play at E3, hopefully a release date and more, but Gabe, what all do we want to know and see from this new slash remade Zelda at E3 2019? Unlike some of the games that are brand brand new, you know, we are aware that this is a remake of a very old game, and some of us are still very excited for that. We'll talk about that here in a moment, Zach. But what I want to see at E3 is what they are changing. What are they including that wasn't there previously? How are they updating this game that, again, is a little older to more modern audiences? Because if it's only a facelift, I'll still play the game. I'll still love it because I love the original, but... I <laughs> That would be a little disappointing. I do want new things, and that's probably what I want the focus for their Zelda section of the E3 presentation to be. Because, you know, there will be one inevitably, right? I absolutely believe so. I think it may not have the fanfare of, say, Animal Crossing, um, Luigi's Mansion 3, Pokemon, just because those are, you know, brand new entries in series that people are, you know, very excited for. But remember, Zelda is not a small franchise by any means, so a new entry of any sort is a big deal. Uh, there's a lot for them to discuss, and the trailer thus far has showed one-to-one -one shots that, while in a beautiful new style, are the exact same as the original. So what do they add? Will they add anything? And then I think that kind of dominoes out to a lot of other areas, right? So if they are adding, how does that expand the game? If they aren't adding, you know, what's the price conversation like? Uh, and, and how does this all sort of play out, including release date? Because to me, it might be a little bit different if it is a, a much bolder venture versus just a straight up remake. I guess at this point, we just got to assume that it's just a straight up remake because that's all we've seen. If there is more, again, hopefully we find out at E3, but for, for now, it, it does look like kind of like it's one to one. And I don't have too much of an issue with that just because it is so old, Zach. <laughs> you mm -hmm. and I are a little old ourselves and, you know, I've played the game. You nah, haven't. We're older than this game, though. Yeah, we are. So I'm, I'm saying, you know, anybody from the age of 18 to 25, like you probably not even played this game before. Yeah. So it isn't to be new to so many people. So maybe that's why they are just doing a complete like facelift and done up in this new, very beautiful and cute art style and not changing up too much because you are going to, at that point, play on the nostalgia of the people that already love it. So they're going to be happy and the new people are going to experience something new anyways because they never played it. I think all it would really take, though, is one or two new side quests or an area that would really enhance the the value proposition and just the excitement for the game because you don't need to like oh gosh there's a whole new second playthrough or oh gosh you know 50 percent of the game is brand new or we've added six new bosses but given things like the cool mario references wouldn't it be neat if they incorporated some modern mario little thing that they could then throw in the game or if they did add one new dungeon or even half of a dungeon a smaller dungeon something of the sort a new weapon something to kind of just make it feel like hey we really are being inventive here i mean i love link between worlds so much and granted these games are going to be very different based on the structure uh, of the aforementioned 3ds title but wouldn't it be cool to see some things that they learned and developed there be implemented into this one i don't know exactly how it would fit um, but what i do know is that no matter what they decide i strongly feel that the price point of this game is going to be sixty dollars yeah <laughs> i mean that becomes tricky they, they they sold you donkey kong country tropical freeze for sixty dollars and that game wasn't originally sixty dollars so yeah, yeah. I, I feel like it's zelda it's a big big franchise that sells very well for them with a rabid fan base that are going to be there no matter what even if it is just to play the game and inevitably not like it i'm not saying that that's what's going <laughs> to happen here but zelda fans are still going to be there and there are millions of them so yeah, sixty dollars is going to be the price. But one thing that uh, you know, Zach, I mentioned that a lot of people maybe haven't even played the game. This is a special Zelda game, man. It really, really is. It's a, a direct like sequel to a link to the past. It all like happens in a dream. 
<laughs> this is the only like real like Zelda game where Zelda's like not even in it. You mentioned hmm. that there's Mario references. There are. There's like a Kirby reference. Like there's all these like weird things in the game. It's the strangest Zelda game that's ever existed, and that's why it's always like held a little bit of a special place in my heart. On top of the fact that you know I, I played on my Game Boy Color like a cool dude in, in, in you yeah. know, 1998. I felt so cool. <laughs> <laughs> but well, well and people regard it very very highly. The dungeons are, are expertly crafted, and as you mentioned, it does have some quirks. Um, that the other titles don't really have. So I think it is a smart one to remake in this way. We were talking about how, like, Nintendo doesn't do a whole lot of this. Yeah, they did Wind Waker HD. Yeah, they did Twilight Princess HD. But taking something from this long ago and giving it a total graphical conversion, I don't know that there's anything exactly similar. So it'll be very interesting to see how Nintendo handles this and how we feel about taking a game from long ago, a Nintendo title, and, and re- doing it all dolled up in a brand new style not just ooh a more hdified version okay i want to ask you this and i already know the answer but i'm gonna ask you anyways is there any chance it doesn't cost 60 dollars because i don't think so i I was i was just going to tell people very quickly uh, originally the game Boy color games were like what 30 to 40 dollars around there i I believe this one was 40 so we're gonna get a markup and if they don't add a lot other than the facelift it's still a a lengthy game you're gonna get your your value worth just with with your time playing but it it was a a handheld game so i I wonder how people are gonna feel about that maybe people expect for it to cost us and i don't think it will i do think it's a 60 dollar game but i'm asking you do you think there's any chance it costs 40 or 50 oh gosh i it's tricky because as you mentioned you know nintendo charged 60 for tropical freeze and that thing sold incredibly well they do not like devaluing i think their biggest properties and zelda is as big as it possibly gets so the idea of you know, releasing Luigi's Mansion 3 and Animal Crossing and Mario Maker at 60, and then this technically, you know, new by their account Zelda game at 40, just, I don't know, I I cannot see that happening in any way. Um, I think that they have, they know that it will be successful at 60, and they do not like to devalue, as I mentioned, their Marios and their Zeldas, so, I mean, hey, a huge win for fans, and, and, wallets if it does come out at 40 i would put that at like i said like near you know one percent likelihood no i mean as far as uh what we can maybe expect to see at e3 maybe like one of the early dungeons we're probably gonna see some like early footage and then continue to be shown how it is a one-to-one thing because i remember you know those videos and those breakdowns from when the trader first released were like hey this is one of one and it's like kind of crazy even like the enemies functioning in the exact same way for the most part like it it was masterful how they were able to do that. And I know that I have, like, a, a, a soft spot for Zelda in my heart. Like, I know maybe I'm building this up a little bit too much in, in my own head just because I, I, it's my favorite video game franchise ever. So I, I'm very, like, aware of that. Um, but I, I'm more interested how people like you are going to take it. People that have, like, never yeah. played this. Well, I'm very interested to see how I react as well because I, like I mentioned, like, The Link Between Worlds is one of my favorite Zelda experiences, and I love that game so much. And... In theory, if I didn't know that this was, you know, a game from 1993, I'm curious just to see if I, if it feels old. If they've made enough quality of life upgrades and the, the new cute art style, is it still going to have the charm and the allure that it initially had to placate current era players? And, and I feel like it will. I, to me, it seems very unlikely that people grab this and are like ugh, this is like stale and old and feels rotten i mean you go back and you play link the past and that game is still phenomenal to this day um Best there's a reason ever. link between worlds Best is so good it's because ever. it's based it's because it's based off of that so i feel like it will still be fun but i am curious just in general you know we're coming off of breath of the wild and most people have much more experience with Zelda than Breath of the Wild, but for those that just got a Switch or that Breath of the Wild was their first Zelda game, how will they react to this? Will, <laughs> will it even be up their alley? Oh, you know, man, if, this, if you played different. Breath of the Wild and, and you're a PS4 era gamer and you like big open worlds and you like the way that games are designed in 2019, you know, do you do you want this one? Uh, I'm very curious, just like you, to see what the, the, the greater reception of Link's Awakening on Switch ends up being. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a valid concern, right? Like, the fact that 
people are used to games being a certain way. Uh, you know, perfect example is just, you know, we don't have to look that far back. Uh, Resident Evil 4 on Nintendo Switch, just how, like, that game controls is not mm -hmm. very modern. And, and and this is top-down, so it's in a... It, it's, it's different, right? The way that this game's in a control is going to be perfectly fine because of the genre and the gameplay style of it. So there isn't going to be those, like, limitations that we had with Resident Evil 4. But you're right. Sometimes some older games don't always, like, translate. I feel like this one will. Uh, again, I've played this, and you mentioned it, but just putting a controller in your hand and having uh, a Link to the Past in front of you, you're going to have an amazing time. That game 100% holds up, and I fully believe this one will, too. It's a little bit simpler just because, you know, there was less buttons back then. I don't know what they're going to do now to modernize some of the controls and things like that. So... I'm interested to see how that goes, but I'm not. I'm not really worried. I do think that people are going to enjoy it, um, mm -hmm. and, and I think it's going to be a fan for for treats. Uh, it's a, excuse me. It's going to be a treat for fans that haven't played. I it. am a fan of treats. <laughs> I am a fan of treats. I know. I what did, what do they give one. you a treat with with a purchase? Well, <laughs> and I mentioned this to you the other day of like if they were taking Super Mario World and redoing it in the new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe style, would you be super pumped? And you said not really, and. I think on one hand, you're a bigger Zelda fan, so that's okay, but also, this game with its quirks, and just stylistically, I feel like if you're going to bring something from 26 years ago to 2019, the top-down Zelda games with an emphasis on quality dungeons, like, I do think they convert very well. And not that Mario World doesn't convert great to today, but there's so many side-scrollers and so many games that do just that in a great way that... And, and, and there's so many Mario games even on the platform that do just that, this one does have a bit more of a, of a smaller niche, and so I feel like it will feel more fresh and surprise more than maybe a different franchise that has seen a lot of um, replication in recent times. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And the reason I said that about Mario was like, for me, that's way more limited. Like, given that a facelift, like, that's like still like exactly the same. And not that this isn't, but I mean, yeah, you, it still looks one to one. Yeah, yeah. But, but the puzzles in this game are like really, really cool. The boss battles are like amazing too. So uh, I'm, I'm not really worried. Um, and do you you're, think that you'll go ahead? Do you think you'll remember the, the puzzles and the, the boss patterns? Yeah, yeah, I think I do. <laughs> I'm gonna be very curious to see if, because that would have been what, like three or four year old Gabe, five year old Gabe. No, nah, dude, I, nah, I didn't. No, I didn't play it until 1998. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so I, I played on the Game Boy Gabe. Color. Yeah, I, I didn't play the original Game Boy one. Yeah. Gotcha. So, does eight year old Gabe? How does he compare and match up to almost 30 year old Gabe? That'll he, be, might, uh, he, he might be superior. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Everything's slowed down, reaction time, memory, <laughs> eyesight, it's all going. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting to see. Is there anything, if you were to add, you know, Nintendo has had an extreme emphasis lately on multiplayer. Do you see an opening for a multiplayer edition, or do you think it would be more of like, yeah, maybe there's like an extra dungeon hidden off in a corner of the world? No, do not try to shoehorn multiplayer in this i don't think that works in any way and we've seen multiplayer zelda game stuff in the past and it doesn't always work super well so that if i'm designing this no no multiplayer uh, a different uh a different dungeon you know with a with its own like little mini boss could be cool i don't want them to mess up the structure they have now with the bosses because there's nightmare bosses and the bosses get more powerful as you progress and you fight them more than once and they you know change and they get more and mm -hmm. more difficult so again just the structure of this game i don't know if it lends itself too too much but sure. uh, I, I feel like a fully different like dungeon could be like awesome. Uh, I don't know what else they would add. We we, we uh, compared it a lot to the Resident Evil Two remake uh, off air, and the fact that they did add a lot of that stuff. Like th there's a lot of new things there, but that was kind of used with like the same assets and things like that. So if they could maybe just like take one of the areas and then just do like some new stuff with that. I feel like that could work, but it, it is tricky just because of how the structure of the game. One thing I was thinking about would be some sort of amiibo integration, whether it was just outfit swaps, like, ooh, now he can wear a Breath of the Wild colored tunic uh, in the game. At the same time, though, we've noticed Nintendo shying away from amiibo inclusion, and and I, I wonder if that era is maybe leaving us. You know, obviously they're continuing to make the Super Smash Bros. amiibo to sort of complete that set. It doesn't seem like it's as big of a deal. It doesn't seem like they are for sure including amiibo support in in everything but i could see that also being a way you know there have been a lot of recent 
Zelda Amiibo with Breath of the Wild, um, and there are a bunch of others out there uh, with the classic collections and with the Smash Brothers collection. So perhaps that's another way, whether it's items, whether it's an, an easy mode of sorts of like giving you extra hearts or things of that sort, maybe there is some of that that could be supplemental content um, that, as you mentioned, doesn't mess the structure of the game, but does provide a little nice added extra bit. That would be cool, but I am... That's that's one of the other things I'm interested for, for E3, just, you know, aside from Zelda for a quick second. Like, what, like, anything Amiibo? Like, if they don't show a lot of Amiibo, like, I'm mean, like, yo, is Amiibo done, like, at this point? Because yeah. there's some big games coming, and if they don't announce any for, like, I don't, I don't know, Pokemon, Luigi's Mansion, whatever, I'm going to be worried for Amiibo fans. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they could just also be shifting to much more of a collector's item. I, I could see them continuing Amiibo as they have done, but not making it an emphasis um, in terms of its connection with software, which for some people, you know, is the point of Amiibo. But I think at this point, the point of Amiibo is much more as a collector's shelf item uh, than it is a you know, great way to get DLC or whatnot. Let's talk before we wrap release date. When do you think this one is hitting? <sighs> Just because, I mean, th this is where I get a little conflicted, right? Because I feel like we know, not for a certainty, but close enough that Pokemon is November. I mean, yeah, they've, they've said as much, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, I would feel December, I guess. Yeah. I, I can't see it coming sooner than that. Yeah, it, it really feels like that is the slot um, for when they would want to put that out. Um, I... <laughs> You're right. All of a sudden announcing, hey, this is a game that's releasing in August feels a little weird. We know that Luigi's Mansion may be a little closer um, than we believe, and Nintendo does like to use their December slot. They used it last year for Smash Brothers, and look how well that worked out. So if you're wanting to get this game as much spotlight as possible, um, in spite of it maybe being an older title, I, I feel like that's the perfect fit. I honestly wish it was sooner. I, I wish it was coming out earlier. I, I wish it would swap because I am so eager to see what it's like. Um, and I think, you know, $60 aside, this is what I initially wanted out of Switch. Remember, we talked at the very beginning about them taking some of their franchises and delivering smaller experiences. Now, I know that this game clocks in with a perfectly fine campaign length. So I don't mean smaller in terms of length. I just mean different from the main line series, different from Breath of the Wild 2, different from Mario Odyssey 2, right? And, and this may be a good new style that Nintendo could potentially replicate a few times over the life cycle of Switch. So I hope it does well. I'm very eager to play it. I hope that we get to play it at E3 and bring you back a lot of footage uh, and impressions and reports and, and hopefully some new stuff to talk about as well. Definitely let us know in the comments down below how you feel about Link's Awakening. Are you pumped? Because it's old, does that lose you? If you've never played any of the original Top Down Zeldas, are you still intrigued? And what do you think about price, release date, and new features? Give us your tag in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and are pumped for Link's Awakening at E3. In the meantime, though, for myself and Gabe, thanks so much for watching. Switch Force, out.